There are sometimes some really terrifying characters in Blue Archive, and I think this is one of them. Hi, welcome back to another Blue Archive video. My name is Lace, and today we're going to be talking about Summer Sky's wish list. It's kind of an event guide, but we're really going to be focusing on like optimizing the event because there is a lot to be farmed for this one. And so, my guys, there is literally nothing left to be said except let's jump right into it. However, before we get into the event and some of the mechanics itself, I want to introduce you to this guy here. And so I do believe that this bad boy is from your boy Stocky. You should all already know him. He does like the raid ratings. But this is essentially a chart which maps all of the different artifacts to each of the different factions as well as the characters. So for example, if I was looking for Azusa, she is Trinity. You can see that she is over here and here. There seems to be a large portrait as well as a small portrait. So the large portrait just means that she is going to be using all of the mats up to the T4. And conversely, we have the small Azusa with the red border that means that we're only going to be using up to the t3 mats for this one and so to be honest i think this is pretty easy to read like for the scope of this event we'll be able to farm the first four rows of the artifacts and so what i would actually highly recommend is like pick out all of your characters that you still need to farm for have a look at the materials that you need so for example for me it's azusa it's mashiro it's summer mashiro and then going along the top i still need some mats for the hibiki over here and then moving down a little bit for the Phaistos discs i might be looking at Samahina if i'm lucky some Azusa for sure, we got Serika and Shiroko are definitely going to be maxing them out and so forth, right? And so using this chart and this chart down here, which tells you all of the different skill levels as well as the mats that are required to take them up, you'll essentially be able to get a list of all of the different materials that you need, right? So for example, if I needed all of those characters, it would come out to something like, oh, okay, I need about like 25 of these guys over here and then about 60 of these and then perhaps like 34 of these and then like 14 of those. Compare it against your overall inventory because I do believe that a lot of these mats, like some of them aren't used as much as the others. As you can see for the lenses, we don't actually have too many high priorities, right? For me, the high priorities would probably be Maki and uh, Shun. And of course, Summer Mashiro if you are going for her. However, for like this uh, butt plug looking thing over here, the Ether, there are certainly a lot of high priority units. I see the Azusa, I see the Summer Azusa, I see the Serika, I see the Kotama, I see the Shun. And then moving across, we have the Cherino over here as well. So yeah, honestly, pretty straightforward. And so with that being said, let's move into the event itself and how exactly we are gonna be farming these four materials. All right, so before I get into the pictures, pictures one, two, and three, a big shout out to Elena, I believe, from the Blue Archive Discord for putting this one together. So picture one is going to be the bonus units listed for each of the event currencies. Sneak preview of that over here. It's pretty straightforward. Obviously, remember to like slot in those new summer units, slot in those Trinity units. Like you see, base Azusa, base Koharu also are going to be giving the bonuses. As with all events, you really do want to be juicing up those bonuses, right? And so coming back over here, as you can see, number two, team's composition for maximum bonus. Second picture, let's have a look at this one here. So this is just essentially kind of like one of the ways that you could optimize your team based on the first chart here. Obviously, not everybody has all of these characters, right? Like for me, I don't have the Bulga Queen. I don't have Hifumi over here. And so like there are a lot of other characters that you could use to stand in their place. However, for some of these teams, you can't plug the gap. But like to be honest, don't worry too much about it because the focus is not really on the currencies. It really is on actually farming for these guys over here, the artifacts. And so before I jump into this image over here, let me come back and then show you guys the notes for the second picture. So this one over here. Except for the beach ball, getting maximum bonus requires clearing certain quests twice with two teams. But otherwise, the second note is quite straightforward. Like you just form teams with the listed units and put either event points, bonus units or others in blank position. It is exactly like I said, essentially just like optimize with the units that you do have. However, that first point is actually super, super important. Getting maximum bonus requires clearing certain quests twice. So yeah, just keep that one in mind. However, with that being said, let's move on to the third image. Let's talk about this one here. All right, so let's have a look through the notes. Sky colored cells means the highest efficiency for AP usage. So therefore, for the event currencies, grind at between quest 9 to 12 for the desired kind of currency. So as you can see over here, you can see these ones, the percentages are highlighted sky color. And then if I scroll down a little bit, you'll see we have the four different currencies. 9, 10, 11, and 12 are the highest efficiencies for each of these. And so what I just said essentially summarizes A and B, I believe. So for artifacts, grind at between 5 and 8, and that is these guys over here.
over here. And just a quick reminder that these guys are the first four rows of this table over here. So yeah, I think the most important thing for this is that you actually do like appropriate amount of planning. Because to be honest, you really don't want to be over farming because you're going to be gimping your characters today, right? Like I know that there certainly is a concept of pre-farming. So for example, I see the Karin bunny over here and down here. I would highly recommend that like from an optimization point of view, just farm for the units that you do have today and like potentially are going to get for summer. So for example, the summer Hina over here. So yeah, coming back over here to the last note, if you want more T3 and T4 than T2 artifacts, then grind at between quest 9 to 12 with the higher drop rate. So let me just show you guys the comparison. It's because like this guy over here, the T4 and the T3 at 30% and 10% are going to get bumped up to 42% and 18% respectively. And so to really put this into like layman's terms, if you have an abundance of these guys over here at the 40%, you're probably better off farming quests 9 over to 12. I know for me that's certainly the case. If I remember correctly, I have like a lot of these guys over here and almost like none of these. So I'm probably going to be looking at farming these guys down here. And it's honestly such a shame that we can't actually do any like transmutations or whatever to potentially combine some of these like lower tier mats up to a higher tier. I don't know if that actually ever gets introduced into JP. Like you JP players do let us know if there is some hope at the end of the tunnel. But to be honest, I think it's okay especially with events like this it's fine we're cruising blue archive is pretty good other than that there is kind of like one more point that i do want to talk about and that is that you should be pulling for your summer characters before you actually go ahead and farm and this to be honest should be a no-brainer right like you look at that you got your summer Azusa, you've got your tsurugi who is indeed a welfare unit but i think you guys get the point and then summer mashiro over here but the thing is on top of that you might get your spook on your koharu if you didn't get her any of these like two stars one stars as well as hifumi and the Borga Queen down here as well. And Surugi actually, I almost missed her. Like again, me personally, I actually don't have Hifumi and I don't have the Borga Queen. And so I might not actually make like the 150% for the max bonus. However, if I do end up sparking for Summer Azusa again, which is going to be so tragic, I don't know, maybe, maybe there's a chance of a spook. I don't know. But with that said, there is nothing left to be said. And so I do want to pass off the question to you guys. Are you guys actually like down bad for these materials over here? Because to be honest, when I have a look at my materials and artifacts, it's not actually that bad. And so for me personally, I think like I can definitely sustain the units that I have today. So I'm going to start looking at the units of tomorrow. So I'm talking about the Samahina, potentially the Karin Bunny, and potentially looking as far ahead as even like Ako or Natsu or whoever. I don't know. I just feel like these aren't like the limiting factors that are holding back my units. And so you guys let me know, are you guys actually getting held back by these? Because I think I'm getting held back more by the skill books. And so my guys, if you do end up dropping a comment, I would really appreciate it because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. So thank you guys so much. And if you did like this video or this video did kind of help you out, then please consider consider a like and if you would like to see more then please consider a subscribe but otherwise as your girl summer Tsurugi once said all good things must come to an end such as our lives so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye